worst crimes in Australia's history. Of 11 murders. The dissected remains of eight men and women. Bad people. Eight bodies in six barrels. Packed with human remains in the old Snowtown bank vault. Police and SES workers began digging. Two skeletons were discovered in the backyard. Shocked by the gruesome discoveries. The Snowtown has changed. Headlines around the world. Five year investigation. The worst serial killings. Dreadful crimes. The Snowtown murders. That's how we're going to be remembered. Major crime investigators have been working on this case for months. Early last night, they made their move. It became very apparent to those police officers that it was highly likely that there were bodies in that room. It's the crime that shook the country and changed the identity of a small South Australian town forever. Absolutely sick. I mean, we're just a quiet little country town. 20 years ago, police made a truly hideous discovery. Eight dissected bodies stuffed into six plastic barrels hidden inside a disused bank vault in the state's mid-north. Another four victims were later linked to the case. Their deaths were soon dubbed the Snowtown Murders. I think uh, undoubtedly uh, it is the worst serial murder case that Australia has ever seen. John Justin Bunting, Robert Joe Wagner and James Spiridon Vlasakis murdered 11 people between them. Mark Ray Hayden helped cover up their crimes. The stench down there was phenomenal. We just thought it's just the way they lived, you know. And then we found out the real stench was actually bodies. Salisbury North man Jack Jordan lived just metres from where two bodies were found buried in the backyard of Bunting's former home. He says he saw the men often and noticed something wasn't quite right about them and even claims Hayden once tried to grab his young daughter. I said, you ever touch any kid around there? I said, I'll hang you under the tree until you're dead. Yeah, that would be the worst neighbour I've ever had. The victims were the men's own family members and friends and many were horrifically tortured before they were killed. Prosecutors allege there was a 12th murder victim but a jury couldn't reach a verdict on her death. I'm not surprised that people still do talk about them. Retired Detective Chief Superintendent Paul Schramm led the investigation. This case is undoubtedly uh, one of the most uh, complex of its kind uh, ever undertaken in Australia. This whole team came together and it was the team's uh, resilience and commitment that was instrumental in bringing these people to justice. Emotions ran high as relatives of the victims left court. No comment. <laughs> the Snowtown case was, uh, was just on another, another level completely. The trial took 11 months, cost the state millions of, of dollars. Former Seven News court reporter Graham Hunter covered the proceedings. The motive was just the, the, the vile vigilantism. It was homophobia, it was greed. It was this sense of, um, of righteous, self-righteousness that they could just go in and, and kill these people because they didn't, uh, didn't like them. And uh, it was just so feral and so evil and so vile. Bunting and Wagner were both sentenced to life without parole. Vlasakis confessed to four of the killings and was jailed for a minimum of 26 years. Hayden was given 25. They recently hit the headlines once again when Robert Wagner made an application to have a non-parole period set, saying he'd like a chance to spend time in the community with his 21-year-old son. My personal opinion is he should not be back on the streets. He, uh, I mean, those crimes were just beyond the pale. We're talking torture. Uh, we're talking uh, cannibalism. We're talking... Uh, the most depraved uh, physical acts one can commit upon another person. Um, no, people that do that should not no, be allowed out. How would you describe your life as the son of Robert Wagner? Broken and destroyed because it's affected me more than anyone else has known, knowing that my father did what he did. For 21 years, he's lived in the dark shadow of a dad responsible for the most evil of deeds. I wanted to give up and slit my throat because I thought I was going to turn out like my dad. And I'm still scared I'm going to turn out like him. His father is Robert Joe Wagner. 
one of the four men involved in arguably the most gruesome and sadistic crimes this country has ever seen. Eleven brutal killings where body parts were stuffed in barrels and stored in a disused bank vault in Snowtown, 150 kilometres north of Adelaide. You were just a baby when the Snowtown murders were unearthed. How old were you when you found out that Robert Wagner was your dad? Um, I was four. Who told you? My, my nana and my mother. And did you understand at that no, age? No, I didn't. At what age did you start understanding who he was and what he'd done? Um, as soon as I got a little bit older, say around 10, maybe 12, under fully understanding what he did, I wasn't happy with him because I used to blame myself that it was my fault he went to jail. I used to think um, he did it to get away from me. Police entered the old state bank building in Snowtown's main street and manipulated the lock of the vault. Inside the vault, they found six plastic containers packed with human remains. Wagner was convicted of 10 of the depraved murders. He even cooked the flesh of one of his victims and ate it. He was given a life sentence. But just weeks ago, in a handwritten letter, he urged the Supreme Court to grant him a non-parole period. He wants to eventually walk free, he says, to spend time in the community with his son. Did you see the letter he wrote in his um, bid for non-parole? Um, no, actually I didn't. It says, I'm a father of a 21-year-old son. I have been in custody since he was 18 months old and would very much like the chance to spend time with him in the community. I don't want him in the community. He's. He's not a person that I want to see every day. He might be my father, but if I, I've put myself into the victim's shoes, I understand why they don't want him out of here. It's just going to bring back the old flooding plus what happened in Snowtown. It's going to bring back memories out of the victims and it's going to hurt him. It's going to destroy him and I understand why they don't want it. You think he needs more time in prison? I, if, to be brutally honest, I know he might be my father and I say I love him. If the death penalty was still in Australia, I do think he did, did deserve to be killed uh, uh, by hanging or something like that if it was still in Australia. To be brutally honest. I do love him, but to take someone else's life is just not fair. You think he's capable of killing again? Yes. That's what I'm petrified of because if he comes out, I'm scared that if he corrupts my mind that he's going to rope me into it, help him with it. And horrifically, he claims he even witnessed his father in the act. Have you ever witnessed your dad's violent side? Yes. Um, when I was younger, really younger, um, I, I crawled into one of the... Um, I didn't know if I was seeing the right thing at the time because I was little. I do have a little bit of a memory of it. Um, I crawled in on him killing one of the one of his victims. You witnessed a murder. Yeah, I was only a little bubby. John accidentally um, left me out of my crib and I walked in on it. So you would have only been a a, a toddler. Yeah, um, I saw him torturing. I don't know who it was. I saw him torturing the. The poor person and when my dad caught me in the room he put me straight back into my cot. That's a lot to witness at such a young age. That's why my mind is a little bit screwed like it is today. I've seen sh stuff that people don't want to dream about. You love your dad? I love my father. Nothing can tear me away from my dad. Nothing is ever going to. I do not know if he's apologetic for his crimes. I know he's apologetic for not being there for me. But how he's, how, what he's going through, I do not know. To be honest, I do not know if he's actually sorry for what he did. She knew too much. For the families of the people who were killed, uh, that date 
is etched in the mind. It's a date that they're never going to forget. 20 years later and still mourning. They are victims of crime, the family members whose loved ones were brutally taken. One held him down, right, one did the other dirty work to him. We couldn't believe that because, I mean, she was in 11 bags. For Suzanne Allen's sisters, they live each day without closure. The jury told Justice Martin that despite long debate, it couldn't reach a verdict on the death of Suzanne Allen. Her body was one of two found buried in the backyard of a Salisbury North house just days after the discovery of the infamous barrels in the Snowtown Bank. I'd like to face him face to face and ask him whether he murdered her or not. John Bunting and Robert Wagner were charged with Miss Allen's murder, but never convicted. We were just devastated because we knew that something serious was wrong, but we couldn't, couldn't seem to get any answers. And we still haven't got any answers. From what they'd heard, Bunting had their sister under his spell. Apparently he was um, a happy-go-lucky sort of a fellow too, but um, she just told us that she was going to get married to him and all the rest of it. And and she was um, madly in love with him. But a week before she disappeared, like many of the other victims, Suzanne left a chilling message for Joan. She was crying and she said, I'm shifting and you won't know where I am until I get settled, I'll let you know. And she was crying her eyes out then. While the men claim she died of natural causes... Well, why would they chop her up? And they still can't accept that Suzanne will never come home. Always looking out for her and see if she's going to come around the corner one day. But, um, no. Personally, I reckon he should rot and die in there. Another victim, Barry Lane, was Robert Wagner's former partner. Rob obviously was, was his shadow all the time. He'd done the murders of my brother. Barry's nephew remembers spending time with the couple when he was just a child. They were like two peas in a pot. His present is haunted by his past, knowing he grew up around one of Australia's worst serial killers. It makes me really feel sick, sick, sick in the stomach, not, not knowing that someone wasn't a serial killer, but, but now is, would turn in such a, pretty much an animal. But it was Wagner's recent plea to be considered for parole that's disturbed the family. You do the crime, you do the time, and for him to say he wants to come out to spend time with his son, well, he should have thought about that before he started um, hurting people. With fears they will become the next victims. If they release him at all, he'll be after me. And I don't want that. Each time there is an anniversary or an important event in the life of their loved one, they have to relive the fact that there is an empty chair at their table. Some of the families want the public to stop making crude assumptions about their relatives. The people who were killed were loved. They were sentenced to death and the families now live with a life sentence. A lot of people do come through here and think this place is evil, it's just pure evil. And it's famous for all the wrong reasons. It's the backdrop for one of the country's most hideous crimes. Inside this very building is where eight dismembered bodies were discovered inside six acid-filled barrels. Police entered the old state bank building in Snowtown's main street. Inside the vault, they found six plastic containers packed with human remains. They put a big cloud over Snowtown. There's some people that just say, you know, they're just bulldoze, they should bulldoze the place. Rob Van Der Veen and Chris Black bought the infamous Snowtown Bank seven years ago. Oh yeah, we copped a bit of flack. <laughs> yeah, friends and that, you know, what the hell are you doing? And little has changed inside the disused building over the past 20 years. There's even fingerprint powder still on the edge of the vault door, left behind by forensic investigators two decades ago. What also hasn't changed over the years is the morbid curiosity of passers-by. Well, every day, this tourist taking photos out the front. I couldn't believe when we first got here, we were thinking, oh, this will die off. But no, it, it hasn't it's... died. And because of that interest, Rob and Chris plan on opening the bank to the public soon. It just can't sit here. There's too many people who are interested in the place. It needs to be opened up. Part of history, it's not a great history, but 
you know. No, you can't change history. It brings people into the town, otherwise they just go past on the highway, you know, and the other businesses in the town benefit. And while majority of the crimes did not happen here, being the dumping ground for evil deeds has left a scar on this small country town. We feel like we're victims of it. it it's, not, um, it's not something we were responsible for and it, it's just something that we really want to move on from, but it doesn't seem to be possible. We're sort of known worldwide. When the bodies were discovered here in 1999, Snowtown locals were afraid of the notoriety that would come with it. We're really kind people, we're not really bad people. It does make the town feel uncomfortable to think that that's how we're going to be remembered. And while it seems everyone outside of Snowtown still does associate this place with murder, those who live here now are determined not to be defined by the bodies in the barrels. It's a fantastic place to live. Like I've moved away and come back and I've decided to bring my family with me and I'm not the only person who's done that. The community is, is made up of good people who um, look out for each other. And when out-of-towners lob in for a look at the bank, locals hope they also take the time to look beyond the atrocities of the past. I want it to be a, a vibrant community, a place to get a coffee or top up your groceries from the supermarket. We have a fantastic sports complex. We've got a nice new mural on our water tower celebrating the uh, volunteers and the uh, different aspects of the community from the past and the present. If we kept on beating ourselves up over what happened 20 years ago, it would, it would be poison, so we don't.